Hello everyone, I'm approaching the small village town of Dumberi and this is in Kiambu County and actually Kiambu town is only 3 kilometers behind me and keep in mind that Dumberi is not your ordinary village actually I'm informed that it is the only village with a 9 hole golf course for commoners and it is not a new thing that the golf club was established in 1950s the club has established the career of many prominent people, including one Gidhu Muigai, who is the former Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya, and one John Michuki, who used to play here when they were brokies. I will be telling you more about that later. I will also be showing you a rich man empire, one famous Jenga Karume, whose estate we will be visiting later in the video, as it is only around the corner, but before then, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our YouTube channel, Village to Town, a channel that is dedicated to continue showcasing beautiful villages, towns, and cities across the continent of Africa. If you are new to the channel or you have not yet subscribed, kindly show some love by subscribing. Now back to our video, and I understand that the town has really developed, but I want to kick start by sampling the old town where everything started. And as you can see, I'm in the middle of the old town, which is easy to identify, especially with the structure of the buildings. Of course, they have seen better days. And as I can see, business is really thriving. And I can see one Jubilee butchery. Well, I'm sure it is named after a local political party, which used to be one of the biggest in the country a few years ago. Before things went haywire, well, that's a story for another day. Despite the town being full of activities, Internal roads are in pathetic condition, and I'm sure the buck stop with the county government. So, Mr. Governor, there's some work to do here. Although we can understand it is the rainy season, I'm also told that the old shopping center had a back street. And so, let's check it out before we hit the road and see the surrounding areas. But so far, so good. I'm quite impressed. The small town is full of life, there are businesses all over. Although it is not quite appealing in terms of organization and planning, but it's somehow understandable. I don't forget that this is a developing country and most people are low income earners. And most people in urban centers such as Dumberi are strive to look for smaller spaces, including squeezing themselves on roadsides just to earn a living. Well, there is no much activities in the back streets. Most shops are closed. I don't know whether they are vacant stalls or most business owners did not show up for work despite being on a weekday. Actually, it is on a Friday, 29th March 2024. And the sun is out here in Dumberi. It's a beautiful day, although it might be affecting the quality of our shots, but we don't complain. It's just for a few seconds before we strike another angle. And we have just maneuvered back to the old shopping center. And although new story structures are coming up in the background, I'm sure this is where everything started and I'm also sure that old timers made great memories here if only structures could tell stories. You can see the setup is still for the old shopping centers. In fact, I feel like I'm walking around somewhere deep in rural Kenya in a small town. And don't forget that we are in the suburbs of Kiambu town which is only 16.6 kilometers from Nairobi city center. And the fact that the small town has maintained the old ambience, it's quite fascinating. But don't get it twisted. The town has really developed along the road and we'll be hitting there soon. Let's first get back to the main road, which is the famous Kiambu Road. And remember the small town is on a crossroad. It is at this point where you decide whether you want to go to Limuru town or Gizungori town. If I turn right, I'll be going back to Kiambu town, maximum a three minute journey. And if I go straight, I'll be going to Gizungori town, which is only 17 kilometers from here or a 30 minute drive but I have decided to go northward toward Limuru town which is only 27 kilometers away just to sample the town and see how it is developing and it is evident this is not a sleepy village administratively Dumberi is a ward which is home to some of the popular villages around Kiambu town such as Ngegu, Kangoya and Torito which we visited in one of our last videos well, those are a bunch of funny names, especially to someone from outside the region. Well, it seems like the town has not developed far from the epicenter. And I want to turn around so that we can have a better view of the town. 
and also sample the residential area. We want to see how the people live behind the town. I'm also eager to see the social amenities in the area, especially schools, and so stick around. I'm also reminded that Dumberi village has produced a lot of prominent people, and one of them is Gidhu Muigai. He is a law professor, and he served as the Kenya Attorney General from 2011 to 2018. Another popular individual from Dumberi Ward is Wanshirwa GP. She is a sensational new school gospel artist who is known for her strong stage presence and dance moves. There is another artist by the name Betty Bio, who is also a gospel artist. Well, the list is long, and this tells you that this is not your ordinary village, and the main road is also in a perfect condition. Remember I told you this is Kiambu Road, which extends from Vika Superhighway around Mudaiga roundabout, all the way to Limuru Town. I am actually looking for a road that will take me to the residential area, deep in the village, and I have just spotted one on my right, which is actually tarmacked. There is no much in this side of the town, but by the look of things, we are likely to turn from a town mode to a village mode real quick. And as you can see, the ambience is changing. And remember, the town center is only a few meters from here. But I have spotted beautiful residential houses. Well, I have to give the village that one. Well, things are changing very fast, and the road is not that nice. Although it is tarmacked, there are potholes all over, or maybe it is only this section, which seems like it is a ditch, and there are no visible water trenches on the sides. Probably a shoddy work by the contractor, but I'm just a lone traveler and not an engineer by profession, so let me leave that. But I'm loving the lush green, the village ambience. Now this is my thing. The fact that Dumberi has managed to maintain a village ambience Despite being only a few kilometers from the city, it's quite fascinating. And it seems like there are no many rental apartments in this side of the town. So it seems like if you want to live in these sides, you have to own land. And a quick search on the prices of land in this area on the internet. It seems like the commodity is quite expensive. For instance, I saw a residential plot measuring 50 by 100 going for 4.5 million Kenya shilling. And another one going for 4.2 million Kenya shillings. Well, that is quite expensive uh, considering the size, but going with the economic principle of demand and supply, the high prices tells you that the area is in high demand. Well, I have just spotted a school on my left, and I will check it out, see what kind of a school it is. The village ambience seems to be conducive for learning, but that's a matter of taste. Some people prefer learning in an urban environment. You can tell us what you prefer on the comment section below. Tell us what kind of a school you attended, was it in the village or in the city, and what was your experience? Well, by the look of things, there are two schools here. One is a primary school, and another one is a secondary school, which is now a common trend across the country, where government learning institutions are now clustered together, especially due to land issues. Upstreet is the primary school, and it goes by the name Karonga Primary School, but I'm not going inside. It seems like learning is ongoing. And of course, you have a beautiful lady school here that goes by the name Dumberi Girls Secondary School. It's a girls only boarding school with a very promising school motto here Learn to Serve. And the mission is here uh, to promote quality education for lifelong empowerment to learners to enable them develop into competent and responsible citizens. Well, okay. That's quite ambitious. I'm told that the school was started in 1979 and went by the name Gitao Secondary School. It was then a mixed day school accommodating both boys and girls, but now it is only a girl school. I don't know why they separated the two genders and why did they take the boys, but it was a trend in the 80s and 90s. Well, let me go back to the town so that I can visit the popular village golf course and an area where the filthy rich lives including the famous Jenga Karume. Come back to the main road, and the popular golf course is on the right, where you see tall trees. And I'm told that it was established in the 1950s by Africans who could not access the high-end golf courses across the country, which were reserved for the whites. Remember, it was in the middle of the colonial era, and there was a bunch of new rich African civil servants who could not access the exclusive golf clubs in the country. 
Well, there's not much of a golf course to speak of here, as the course is just a plain field, which also serves as a local football pitch, and on one corner is the DO's office. In fact, the office is built on the ninth hole, and it was supposed to be the clubhouse for the members. So, in short, if you are playing golf here, you have to be careful not to hit the DO or a police officer at the office and bring unnecessary trouble to yourself. However, the golf club is still functioning and it is still considered as the most affordable as a membership fee is still the lowest in the country and has a literal of 100 members. And so if you are just a normal Kenyan, have no old money and you would like to ball and play the rich man game, just head over to Dumberi village. But I will give you a piece of advice as you enjoy the rich man's game. Please be careful as playing here is like throwing the proverbial stone at the police station. A risky offense that will bring you more trouble than enjoyment. Apart from that, it is good to note that prominent golfers such as Joseph Karanja, who was a former vice president, and Dan Kandegwa, who was a former governor of the central bank, started here. Enough with the golfing shenanigans and I'm cruising smoothly along the Kiambu Road. Actually, I'm only a few meters from Dumberi, heading to Limuru. And as you can see, the environment has changed drastically, and we are now flanked by coffee plantations on both sides of the road. In fact, on my right is one of the biggest tea and coffee processing companies in Kenya, which goes by the name Sassini. This tells you that we are in the rich man's paradise, as there are only large-scale farmers. One of these farmers was the prominent Jenga Karume, a man who became very popular across the country after amassing a crazy amount of wealth without having the formal education. This was well captured in his book, which went by the title From Chaco to Gold, where the old timer explained how he got the wealth, including a vast estate that I'll show you very soon. His beautiful mansion is also around the corner, and I'm rushing to see a school that I'm told is named after him. I'm also told that the guy served as the area MP for many years, which explains why there are a lot of institutions bearing his name. In fact, he happened to be in office from 1974 to 2007, and so you can do the maths and see how long he served. In fact, if you are an old-timer like myself, you would remember that he served as the Minister for Defense in the Kibaki government. Unfortunately, the legend died almost 12 years ago, leaving his vast estate to his children, and I'm told there are a bunch of cases against the will. Well, that's family politics for you. And here is the learning institution bearing his name. It's a primary school, and it goes by the name Jenga Karume Comprehensive School. Of course, as you can see, learning is ongoing. The school is open. And one thing that I have noted today is that primary schools in the area always keeps their gates open, while secondary schools are always closed. Well, I don't know the motivation behind that, but if you are an educationist or a teacher, you can tell us on the comment section below. Well, there is a secondary school on my right, which is right behind the primary school, and my theory still persists. The gate is closed. We are now approaching Shianda Estate, which is on my left, and it was owned by one Jenga Karume, the deceased, and it is still part of his vast estate, which is probably run by his children. I'm not sure about that. It is a tea estate. You can see the name. It is one of the biggest employers to the people of Dumberi, alongside Sassini, and the fact that the estate has survived this far after his death, it's quite commendable. Since there is a rich man curse, especially here in Africa, where immense wealth is lost after one's death, probably resulting from internal wars among family members, fighting for who get what and who manage what, and in the process, the wealth dies along the owner. I feel like the trees are very beautiful alongside the tea plantations, although the sun is shining hard and reflecting on the windscreen, but remember patriots, this is a private land, and going further might resort to trespass. And of course, the last thing the lone traveler would wish is trouble. Or who would really want to catch a case in these hard times? Of course, I have got no love for trouble. Let's quickly check out the numbers. 
and Dumberi has a total population of around 18,000 people. It is in Kiambu sub-county, which has a population density of 1,484 people per square kilometer. The population is growing at an annual rate of 3%. And in the case of gender distribution, 52.2% of the population are females, while 47.7% are males. Thanks for watching. And the fact that you have watched this far means that you somehow likes what we do. So please show some love by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Village to Town, a channel that is dedicated to continue showcasing beautiful villages, towns, and cities across the continent of Africa. Like the video so that it can be recommended to as many people as possible and smash the notification bell so that every time we post, you'll be among the first few people to be notified. Thank you.